Hello, my name is Aaron Fisher and I am the Youth Livestock and Equine Specialist in the Department of Animal Science at the University of Tennessee. I am presenting a video study series focused on beef cattle related topics for the Skillathon. This particular episode will focus on the ruminant digestive system. We will talk about the main differences between ruminants and non-ruminants along with examples of each as well as describe the structure and function of the ruminant digestive system and what makes it unique. Farm animals are generally classified as ruminants or non-ruminants. These classifications refer to the structure and function of their digestive system as well as the type feed that is the basis of their diet. Non-ruminant animals possess a monogastric stomach and are sometimes called simple stomached. Their structure and function is very similar to that of humans. They primarily eat a grain-based diet. Farm animal examples include swine and poultry. While horses are also non-ruminants, they would not be called simple stomached. They are actually hind gut fermenters, which means that the cecum functions as the site of fermentation much like the rumen in cattle. Horses primarily have a forage-based diet, much like ruminants. You will often hear that ruminants have four stomachs. That is not true. They have one stomach with four compartments, the rumen, reticulum, omasum, and abomasum. Each compartment has a distinct function as it relates to the digestion of ingested feed. Ruminants are generally fed a forage based diet. Farm animal examples include beef cattle, dairy cattle, sheep, and goats. The first compartment is probably the most popular compartment, the rumen. It is commonly referred to as a large fermentation vat. It serves as the host for microorganisms primarily bacteria and protozoa, which are responsible for the fermentation that breaks down cell wall content of ingested forages. The rumen is lined with papillae, which serve to increase the surface area of the tissue and allow for increased capacity for nutrient absorption. The second compartment is the reticulum. It is commonly called the honeycomb, because of the honeycomb appearance of the reticulum wall. The reticulum sits in front of the rumen and is the place where non-food items end up after being ingested. This could include nails, wire, and other hardware items. These items can puncture the reticulum wall and cause hardware disease, which could lead to death. Magnets are commonly administered to cattle as a prevention for hardware disease. Next is the omasum, which is commonly called mini plies because it looks like pages in a book. The major function of the omasum is water absorption. The fourth and final compartment is the abomasum. The abomasum is the compartment that functions much like the gastric true stomach of a non-ruminant. Digestive enzymes break down ingested feed here. Most forages are made up of cellulose and hemicellulose. Cattle, like other animals, are not able to digest these complex carbohydrates on their own. The ruminal fermentation is made possible by the rumen microorganisms. They give cattle and other ruminants the ability to graze land that is not well suited for anything else and turn the forages into high quality meat and milk. A former college professor of mine used to call them biological bush hogs. The microorganisms and the animal live in a symbiotic relationship. This means that it is beneficial for both. The animal provides a warm place to live with a constant source of food, room and board, so to speak. The microorganisms break down the ingested forages into a usable form that can be used by the animal, 
that otherwise they would not be able to use. Here is a microscopic view of rumen microorganisms. The large brown oblong shapes are one kind of microorganism that is eating and breaking down forages for the animal. The primary end products of this ruminal fermentation are volatile fatty acids, or VFAs. They are the main source of energy for the animal. The three main VFAs are acetic acid, or acetate, propionic acid, or propionate, and butyric acid, or butyrate. The microorganisms also produce other nutrients for use by the animal. They can turn non-protein nitrogen into microbial protein. Urea is a common example of non-protein nitrogen. There are also some B vitamins that are produced by the fermentation. There are also byproduct gases such as carbon dioxide and methane that are a result of ruminal fermentation. These gases can build up and cause bloat in the animal. If they are not released, they can lead to death of the animal. Many people talk about cows chewing their cud. This is actually the rumination process. Cows will graze for a period of time and then they will ruminate, which basically consists of regurgitating, rechewing, and re-swallowing the forages that they have consumed. This works to reduce the particle size and aids in further digestion. So chewing cud is a very important part of the digestion process for cows. That wraps up our discussion of the ruminant digestive system. Please understand that we only hit the high points of the ruminant digestive system and the fermentation that takes place within the rumen. This process is much more complex than what we talked about today and there are many other structures and functions that contribute to the anatomy and physiology of the ruminant digestive system. I wish you the best of luck as you progress through your beef cattle project. Please let me know if I can ever be of assistance. Thank you and have a great day.